Hi, welcome back to Strategic Management. I'm Melissa Schilling, and in this video, we're gonna talk about vertical integration, and in particular, when it does and does not create value. Okay, so what is vertical integration? Well, suppose you have a ketchup manufacturer. One of the major supplies to the ketchup manufacturer is tomatoes grown on a tomato farm. After the ketchup is manufactured, it is sold to some sort of distributor, like a retail grocer. If the ketchup manufacturer gets into the business of growing its own tomatoes, that's backward vertical integration. If the ketchup manufacturer gets into the business of retail outlets, that's forward vertical integration. It should be pretty obvious that the things that are required to make a tomato farm successful are pretty different from the things that are required to make a ketchup manufacturer successful or a retailer successful. Therefore, even though these businesses are related in terms of being in a value chain together, they're not closely related in terms of competencies and assets. So when will vertical integration create value for the firm? A firm might need to vertically integrate when there's a market failure. For example, maybe the supply or distribution channel doesn't exist yet, or maybe the firm needs greater control over the quality, quantity, and timing of supplies and or its distribution than the market is willing to provide at a fair price. For example, selling electric vehicles is more complicated than selling gas-powered cars, and Elon Musk didn't think he could get the quality of salesmanship he wanted from traditional dealerships. Therefore, he started his own dealerships for the Tesla cars. The Segway Personal Transporter provides an example of a market failure on the supply side. When Dean Kamen was designing the Segway, he needed balancing gyroscopic components that just didn't exist on the market yet, so he had to make them himself. That's an example of backward vertical integration. These components made the Segway entirely self-balancing, or er, almost self-balancing. Another reason firms vertically integrate is if they can leverage an advantage into adjacent stages of their value chain. For example, as Alibaba grew to become one of the largest online retailers in the world, it developed relationships and accumulated data that also gave it a huge advantage in managing the shipping of those products. Therefore, it forward vertically integrated into managing logistics. A firm might also vertically integrate if it thinks it needs to do so to protect its proprietary technology. For example, if a firm's technologies can't be well protected by patents and copyrights, it might be afraid of exposing them to suppliers or intermediaries. For example, suppose a company develops a really innovative lithium sulfur battery technology, but part of its technology process can only be protected with trade secrets. In this case, it might forward vertically integrate into manufacturing its own pouch cells instead of using an assembler. Finally, sometimes managers justify vertical integration by saying they're going to cut out the middleman and therefore keep the profits its middleman would make, but this only works in very specific situations. For example, suppose you have an auto manufacturer who buys steel from a steel mill and sells its cars through dealerships. The cut out the middleman argument often breaks down because people have forgotten the assets required to be the middleman and they forgot about competition in the middleman's market. It takes assets like stores and inventory to generate a return as a dealer and unless you can do that better than they're doing it, odds are you're not going to increase your profitability. But there's an exception, and that exception is called disintermediation. This happens when you don't need all of the assets of the intermediary anymore. Suppose you have a beauty products manufacturer. A beauty products manufacturer might normally use online retailers or physical beauty product stores to reach their customers. But if customers are willing to try products based on something like online testimonials, the beauty products manufacturer can set up its own website and sell direct to the consumer. That's disintermediation. Vertical integration also has risks. One risk is that you have more assets tied to the same value chain, and that means more market-specific risk. For example, if you make auto parts, and you manufacture automobiles, and you own your own dealerships, you are more susceptible to downturns in auto sales. If you're backward vertically integrated, you may not be able to quickly change to better supplies when they become available. 
For example, if you're an electric vehicle manufacturer and you own a giant battery factory, it may be harder for you to adopt that lithium sulfur battery technology when it comes out. If you forward vertically integrate, other intermediaries may not want to work with you. This is known as channel conflict. For example, when Microsoft forward vertically integrated and produced the Surface, it really aggravated the OEMs that were already buying its software for their computers. Last but not least, as we already noted, different stages of the value chain often require very different skills and assets, so being vertically integrated can lead to a loss of focus. So let's recap. Motives for vertical integration include solving for a market failure in supply or intermediary markets, leveraging an advantage into adjacent stages of the value chain, protecting a proprietary technology that might be exposed to others, or exploiting a profitable opportunity for disintermediation. Risks of vertical integration include having more market-specific risk, not being able to quickly switch to better supplies when they become available, having other intermediaries not want to work with you, and loss of focus.